there. What's up, babes? I hope you guys are having an amazing summer. Um, things over here have been very good, very busy. I officially started school. I was on the Today Show. I finished recording my audiobook, which was so cool and surreal. I can't, I can't believe the book is happening. And most importantly, I found a ridiculously easy way to trim your pubes. I've got a teensy tiny break and I'm trying to film a bunch of videos because I have been having so many thoughts just knocking around my head of things that I feel like I need to just get out. So one of those thoughts I wanted to talk about today, which is social media and what a nightmare it is. Pull up a chair. I need to rant. But first, a shout out to BetterHelp for supporting my channel in these apocalyptic times. If you haven't heard of it, BetterHelp is an online counseling service. You can text your counselor, you can call them, whatever is most comfortable for you, and you can do it all from home, which is amazing. When I'm in a pit, it's a lot to find a counselor, schedule an appointment with them, get yourself all the way over there, figure out insurance stuff. Because it's online, BetterHelp is super accessible and it's cheaper than an office visit. So I'm super glad that it exists and I hope it can be helpful to some of you if you're in kind of a funky place right now. Visit betterhelp.com slash Lacey to check it out. Of all the things about social media, there are three in particular that I think are the actual worst. Actually Satan. I actually think I follow Satan on Twitter. As someone who has made a number of videos about feminism, social justice, political things, I would say the number one boner breaker is the political environment on social media. It's like, what? Is this nightmare hole? In the early days of social media, like way back when, it used to feel like political arguments were something that you could opt out of if you wanted to. But now it feels like, nope, someone posts a picture of the food they're eating. In the comments, there are a bunch of people who are there to tell that person why they shouldn't eat that. Someone tweets about how they love such and such movie, right? Oh, bunch of people there to tell them why they're a shitty person for liking that movie. Maybe you didn't get the message, but joy is not allowed on the internet anymore. Or my favorite, I follow a lot of lesbians, okay? And, and one of the things that comes up sometimes is dudes just being horrible. And she'll tweet about it, right? About her experience. And then what happens? In swoop a hundred dudes there to tell her that she should just deal with it and it's not that big of a deal. Literally frothing at the mouth. It's not that big of a deal. <laughs> oh really? Tell me how not big of a deal it is. Anyway, at some point, you know, it started to feel like social media switched for me from a place that was sort of a retreat, a place to make friends, you know, to meet you guys, to talk, have good conversations, whatever, to a place that people went to be mad online. Twitter, madonline.com. Facebook, extremelyangry.com. Tumblr, you are literally trash and you should kill yourself, .com. Some of the things on my timeline that ushered in this new angrier era um, was Gamergate and the rise of anti-feminist YouTube. All these people suddenly, just dozens, maybe hundreds, making videos about me all the time, just really angry, <laughs> and I was like, whoa! In the similar vein, the growing popularity of YouTube drama, everyone's just trying to pull each other into shit to get views, and that is still happening, which is why this website's a stats pool. And then my own circles, there was a real shift toward a much nastier, much more dogmatic, um, social justice rhetoric that just seemed to sort of suck people in like this tornado. And then over all of this was the 2016 election. And look guys, to, to a degree I get it. Like I am also an incredibly angry person. I too enjoy being a little shit stain from time to time just because it feels good. But it, it physiologically is doing something to our bodies that makes me worry. Okay, when, when people feel annoyed or angry or irritated or whatever it is, online, mad online, it triggers a response in the part of your brain where fear is also triggered, right? The amygdala. So every time people are saying something online that they're upset about, there are varying degrees of, of triggered, you might say. That is actually how people online started to use the word triggered to refer to the fight or flight response that comes with being 
angry, the increased heart rate, the increased blood pressure, tunnel vision on whatever it is they're upset about. Somebody is wrong online right now. And something that's notable about this type of arousal is that it can take several hours to several days or even weeks to really come all the way back down to your baseline. And in that time, while you're coming back down, you are more vulnerable to being aroused again. So I worry that social media, with its constant bombardment of these types of things, this constant outrage, this constant anger, it's not giving our systems time to come back down. And so things just sort of escalate out of control and people find themselves feeling irritable and cranky and depressed about the world. There's never a reprieve on social media. There's never a lull. There's always more to scroll to. This ties into my second gripe about social media. Social media is annoyingly addicting. First step to recovery is admitting you have a problem. There have been times when I'll hop in the shower and I'll lay on my bed to dry off and I'm like, okay, five minutes on Twitter, right? And then suddenly, literally in the blink of an eye, the entire hour passes. Now I'm late for everything, my life is in disarray. It really makes me wonder, y'all, what kind of a freaky deaky vortex is this thing? Honestly, social media is probably a tool for surveillance or maybe a tool to divide and conquer. <laughs> what was I saying? So since the beginning of the year, I have been limiting the number of hours that I allow myself. I don't want to spend my life staring at a screen as I stare at a screen. My last gripe, is the one that has the most research behind it, actually. This is something that a lot of people are studying. The levels of anxiety and self-harm and depression have gone up right alongside social media usage amongst young adults. There was a report just the other day that came out in JAMA Facial Plastic Surgery where researchers are documenting a phenomenon known as Snapchat dysphoria, where people are coming in to plastic surgeons, showing them pictures of themselves with filters on and asking plastic surgeons to make them look like that, which is, whoa. These effects are coming from just casual social media usage where people are being exposed to your typical social media content, which is people posting filtered pictures of themselves, right? Or face tuned or whatever. And people posting the happiest things in their life, which is great. However, it's a recipe for disaster because it puts us into a constant state of comparing ourselves with other people um, and of really being immersed in this unreality, right? Because real life isn't like that. Because in real life, people do have struggles. They do have setbacks. They do have bad days. Their relationships aren't picture perfect. You know, their, their pictures aren't picture perfect. I think we need to have more conversations about what a healthy relationship with social media looks like what a healthy relationship with so social media feels like. We are working against algorithms. We are working against dopamine hits when you get notifications or replies or whatever. Our brains are really vulnerable to the manipulation of these platforms and no one is immune. I'm very much trying to figure out what it means to be someone who's active on social media and also a mentally healthy person, um, which is why, you know, you guys message me, I miss you. Why don't you post as much anymore? I miss you too. I'm sorry I don't post as much as I want to on social media. Part of it is just being busy, but I also feel like these toxic things do affect me, you know, and I'm trying to be healthy about that. So, and I hope you're, you know, healthy about that too. Thank you for letting me rant. I appreciate it. I feel better. Still have a lot of thoughts bouncing around though, so figure out how to put those thoughts into words to make a video. I love you guys so much. I will see you next time. I am shocked at how well this works. What are the kids saying now? Shook.